What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Seattle Sonics expansion rebuild here in NBA 2K24. We had a pretty successful first offseason, I would say. We brought in Lawrence Reed at the starting point guard position with the number 10 overall pick. That guy can shoot the lights out of the building with his three-point shot. Unfortunately, his defense leaves a lot to be desired, so we're going to be working on that over the course of this series. Hopefully, he can at least become a somewhat consistent defender, and to help that out, we brought in veteran Kyle Lowry to kind of act as a mentor to Lawrence Reed at the shooting guard position. We're sticking the same with Kobe White and Brandon Boston Jr., but we also picked up Lawrence Mills. We made a trade for another late first round pick. We only had the one at the beginning, but we made a last second trade with Javon Carter to send him for another late round pick. And we also brought in Bryce McGowan's off screen there. At the small forward position, we had our big signing of the off season, OG Ananobi. He is such a good defender, such a good three point shooter. With both of our draft picks not being that great on the defensive side of the ball, I felt like I had to bring in a guy that can guard the other team's best player. But outside of that, this roster really did not improve much. And we're going to be taking on a young and a hungry Pistons roster. This roster has underachieved for years now, and they are stuck in what seems to be like a purgatory rebuild. They're going to be looking this season to kind of get back on track after a long time of a relevant basketball player but we're going to try our best to set this team up to have a successful year the roster maybe not the most impressive overall wise we had to settle for some pieces that uh were maybe our second or even sometimes our third options out there in the free agency pool um so it was not always we got exactly what we wanted in the offseason sometimes we had to settle and that's where we're going to see this offense and this team probably see some issues there as we're going to start the day early in the first quarter. OG Ananobi's getting his first touch as a Sonic. We're going to give it back to Lawrence Reed looking to get things going early in his career. Reed's going to go off the screen, pull up three is good. And the rookie hits his first shot of his career, giving the Sonics a 3-0 lead, which would quickly be cut down. To just one as Cade Cunningham takes advantage of the defense there by OG Ananobi being lackluster. And he's going to hit the nice layup. We see Cunningham miss the mid-range jumper here. We're going to see Kobe White in transition. He's going to give it a Nasir little spin move. Can't get free. He likes to get free off of those. But good job by Beef Stew. But he's not going to do a good job there on Lawrence Reed. He's got two threes quickly. The rookie is making an impact here. He's working on Jaden Ivey now, looking to get another shot up. Reed uncovered, and it's good again. Lawrence Reed with three three-pointers in the quarter, and he has got nine points so far. 16 to 14 for the Sonics. Cunningham trying to respond. He's going to go to Claxton. They let him go, or they let Jalen Duran go, and they brought in Nicholas Claxton in the offseason. A bit of a questionable move, but it's working today as he does a nice job of facilitating the offense. And now it is a two-point lead for the Pistons. We're going to see OG Ananobi's first shot as a Sonic, and it goes in. OG is going to hit the three now late in the first quarter, 24-23. to Cade Cunningham at the top of the key. He is going to run the clock down. Cunningham, three wide open. It's good. Brandon Boston went under the screen before he should have. And that's going to take us down four into the second quarter as we see Cade kick it out to Thompson. It's going to be a three from the corner. And I believe that's a Amon Thompson. I think a SARS on the Rockets. I can't, I'm not exactly sure, honestly. Can't remember what happened. And that one is good again from Cade. And the three are falling quickly for the Pistons. They go up now 34 to 3 to 36. OG Ananubi's going to give it out to Nasir Little, who's going to go back to Lawrence Reed. Reed's going to get it around the corner, dumps it down to Little, and a nice assist to Nasir Little. He has got seven on the day, and the Sonics offense trying to stop from stalling out. That's something we struggled with last year, is just staying in these games, staying aggressive, and not stalling out on the offensive side of the ball. We're going to see Cade Cunningham run, running with the ball. He is being guarded constantly by OG Ananobi, but he has not been impacted just yet. A nice pocket pass to Nicholas Claxton, and he's going to dunk it down, 45-38. to 38. Five minutes left in the quarter. Kobe White kicks it outside to Reed. He has got the three, and he has four of six from three. Lawrence Reed is having himself a field day 
Io de Sunmo's corner three is no good. Could have used that one down by 12 now in the final minutes of this second quarter. Jaden Ivey with the ball. He's being guarded by Kobe White. He's going to go around the screen. Ivey's going to get the open three. Contested late, and it's still good. Doesn't matter at this point. Kobe White put his hand out. And the Pistons still up 56 to 41. They are cooking on offense. We're going to see Nasir Little drive. He's going to get it stripped, but he gets it back rather easily. Bogdanovich, good defense now. Ring around the rosy for the Sonics. It's going to be a kick out to Pokashevsky. Wide open. Three is good. Mike Conley was late to contest it. As the third quarter opens up, down by 11. Bogdanovich has been quiet today. He's looking to get started. He's going to run a pick and roll with Isaiah Stewart. And he's going to get a nice layup in the paint. 48 to 60, 12 point lead. Jaden Ivey making it 15 as the Pistons are starting to run away with this one. 69 to 50, down by 19. The Sonics have went ice cold. Stewart on the perimeter. Looking, he gives it out to Bogdanovich, who's going to drive in. He's going to kick it out to Stewart, who immediately lets it fly. And a timeout is coming up for the Sonics, down 75 to 52 now. Five and a half minutes, Jaden Ivey straight to the basket, and this defense is struggling now as Milan Mack wants a timeout, down by 77 to 52. Lawrence Reed gets his next bucket, though, 15 on the night for the rookie. He is doing a good job being thrusted into a starting role day one. He's going to go out to the other rookie and Lawrence Mills, and his three is good. So both of the rookies contributing. Mills has four on the day, all in the third quarter. 79-58, to Keg Cunningham has been cooking. Cunningham's on the perimeter, letting the offense settle down a little bit. Cunningham's going to go to Valanchunas. He's going to drive, gets it back to Claxton, though. Claxton on the perimeter, handoff to Cunningham. Cunningham's going to pump a few times, give it to Bogdanovich on the contested three. It's going to fall for the Pistons. They're just hitting everything here in this third quarter. As OG on a Nobe throws it down on top of Jaden Ivey's head. And that is a big turn of events for the Sonics, but still down 91 to 64. Desumbu is going to go to Isaiah Joe. Now as the sixth man is going to hit the three. He was a good starter for us last year. And now they really are just expecting him to be that six-man of the year candidate off the bench. I would love to have him as a long-term bench option as we see Marvin Bagley expose the perimeter or the post defense by Pokashevsky. As we see Lawrence Mills in transition, the rookie hits another three, and that one falls. He's got seven on the night, but the Pistons still up 93-75. to Mo Bamba's going to kick it down to Mills. Mills drives, and the layup is good. Gabe Cunningham lost him in the transition defense. They are now down by 15, 95 to 80. Three from the corner. Conley is knocking it down again. This team is not missing, even down to 15. And the Pistons still hit every shot. Now Conley going to drive. Good spin move. Fade away. It is good. A step back. Excuse me. Great defense, but just like that. The Pistons, no matter what we threw at them, they were just hitting every shot they put up. As you see, OG Ananobi drain the three there at the end of this game here. A minute 42 remaining. Jaden Ivey now working on Kobe White. He's going to step back. He's probably about to hit the craziest shot you've seen. 112 to 94. Ivey in the paint. He's going to get pushed around by White. Good defense there by Kobe White. Not something you get to say very often as they're going to reset the offense give him a pick and pop with Cade and it's oh man heavily contested by Isaiah Hartenstein it's still good doesn't even matter the Pistons are gonna walk out of here with a 119 to 98 win Javante Green hits the shot after the buzzer and this Sonics team starting the year out weak and that is not a good way to get our first look at this roster we felt like we improved some pieces in the offseason but apparently our defense is going to need a lot of work, and our offense is going to need a lot of work to stay consistent. They just went stagnant there, especially in that second quarter, and the Pistons took advantage of that. Lawrence Reed, though, he did, may not have shot as well as you would have liked, but he played as good as possible for a rookie starting in day one. 23-2-6, three turnovers, right around 50% from the field, maybe a little less, over 50% from three. 
OG Ananobi had 12 and 2. He shot 50%. Nasir Little had 10 and 8. A good job there. Isaiah Hartenstein down there with 7 and 10. And do not forget Lawrence Mills with 9 and 2 on the day. And this team, you can only go up from here, you have to hope. But the Pistons exploited this defense. And even with OG Ananobi guarding Cade Cunningham, he had 46 and 11 and 5 steals. Cade Cunningham was playing out of his mind for the Pistons. And that is where we are going to start going ahead and simulating a few games into the year. I like to play about a game every month. So I want to look around the league and go ahead and simulate some and see exactly what happens. Uh, because it's always interesting to see how this team performs as we get a win against the Suns. But we're going to go on a bit of a losing streak in Kobe White is going to be left with a injury, which will keep him sidelined for a long while this season. That is a tough, tough deal to hit or break there for this Sonics team. Just when you thought it couldn't get any less experienced, Bobby White's going to go down. So we're going to be relying on a good amount of rookies if you look at this. Because now Lawrence Mills is going to need to get a lot of playing time. At, he's our backup shooting guard now, essentially. And uh, despite Brandon Boston Jr. being good, I like Lawrence Mills as a backup as we have five minutes left. We're going to go ahead and go around and give that to some of our starters um, as we have some pieces that I do think should be getting some more playing time. But it looks like so far we're going to be in for a long season sitting there at three and seven. Let me make sure something's on. And we were actually able to string together a nice few wins there uh, actually with a Five-game winning streak. This roster, surprisingly, was somehow able to pull that out of the hat. And we are now sitting at 7-8 and eight as we are at the end of November now, about to take on the Milwaukee Bucks next episode. But before we do that, I want to go ahead and start out with our first prospect introduction of the season. Now, last time I waited till the end of the year to start him up, but this year I want, or this season, I want to do him as early as possible to just go ahead and get our first look at some of these players so we can become familiar with them, I would say. Because some of them, you know, it felt kind of rushed. I wanted us to be able to take a look at these players and see exactly what their strengths are. And um, we're going to start out with a 6'10", 21-year-old or 20-year-old power forward from Mexico, Alejandro Alvarez. He has a uh, no comparisons yet. We haven't scouted him. You guys will see that a little bit later on as the scouting reports come out. Um... But Alvarez is a good power forward, a tall power forward, small forward hybrid. Um, he has a good job on defense, and he's a good post-up option on offense who needs to work on his outside shooting. But he can do it okay. Um, that's what makes him a two-way interior threat. As of right now, he's pretty much the unanimous one or two number one overall pick. 2K has him at number one, and then the other base places have him at number two, Kent Robbins is projected at number two from 2K. He is a 19-year-old, 6'8", small forward out of Canada. So a couple of foreign guys here at the top. You're going to see a few more. This guy has a good slasher ability. He can get to the rim, and he can finish with the best of them. That's really because he is so strong, fast, and athletic. But he needs to work on honing in the rest of his game. His defense is reliable enough. And at 6'8", he can you know guard up with power forwards to a degree. Uh, but this guy really can just jump out of the gym. Next up, we've got Troy Lane, the 7'2", all-star potential center out of South Florida. He is 22 years old, so he's older, but he is 7'2". And this man is a defensive monster. He's going to get blocks. He's going to get steals. He is going to lock down people. And do not, do not be surprised at his perimeter defense. For his size, he is a very... Very solid perimeter defender. Troy Kane is just a talented, talented individual there sitting at the projected number three for 2K. But he is also projected number one all around the board in most major outlets. So Troy Kane is a potential number one overall draft pick just because of how good he is defensively. And if he can, he can round that offense out. This guy will dominate as we get back to a couple more foreign guys tiago andrade out of brazil is a 19 year old 6'9 power forward who is a mid-range specialist he can rebound he can play defense in the paint needs to work on his three-point shooting his finishing um is a little bit average i would say and he really needs to work on his perimeter defense but this guy can be a solid nba player if he works on that 
um, as we now get to Timmy Little. He lives up to the name. He's 6'1", 20 years old out of Mississippi State. Little is a three-level threat. This guy, despite his size, can get into the paint and he can score around taller defenders. He's also a good nagging defender. Reminds me of a TJ McConnell type guy again that can just, you know, get on the nerves of other players while he's playing defense there. Um, and that's really with the heart and the athleticism that he does have at that height. He is going to be a top 10 pick for sure. Um, as he is followed up by another relatively short point guard, Jose Herrera out of Argentina. Um, once again, a athletic guard that's smaller than you would like, but he still makes up for it with his finishing ability. This guy is a finesse finisher as 2K shows. He can finish on the inside around taller defenders and he can also shoot the ball so this guy has a lot of potential around the basket but he can also spread the floor and that's why he's projected a pretty wide range from 6 to 22 as far as draft projections go this guy is a bit mysterious um and i think that's why he is going to be a you know a wide range of selections we see jonathan graves another small point guard um this guy is from a small school missouri state he's got comparisons to mighty mouse there and Damon Stoudemire, um, but he is a good floor spacing general, I would say. This guy has a good eye to pass the ball around, and he's going to play decent defense, and he's going to shoot the three at a high level. He is going to very much lead an offense if he's able to get the keys from a team there. Um, as we now move to a 6'8", small forward from France, and Jacques Sisse. He is an interior threat who can score in the paint. Not a great shooter, um, unfortunately for him, but for his size and position, he's a good defender in the paint. He's a good perimeter defender and he's a good rebounder. This draft is missing those elite three point shooters that we had in the previous year's draft. Um, but not all the way do not ignore Dante Harris, the seven foot center from Texas A&M sitting at 22 years old. So he's on the older side, this guy at seven feet tall, is maybe one of the best three-point shooters in the draft. As you can see, his archetype is a spot-up shooter. Dante Harris is going to be able to hit shots with a hand or without a hand in his face. He really needs to work on passing the ball around. He needs to get a little bit more agile and athletic for his size, but do not underestimate his ability to hit threes. As far as another three-point shooter goes, you've got 6'9", Oscar Bellamy out of Gonzaga, another um zag prospect there he's a good athletic small forward power forward hybrid and this guy can defend the lights out in the paint and he is a good solid rebounder something you would love to have at the small forward position but he needs to work on getting there and making his offensive game fine-tuned he has a lot of rust in his offensive game and that's why he's probably going to fall down to number 10 maybe a little bit farther out of the top 10 as we continue with another foreign player. This one's Gilberto Mancini out of Italy. He is compared to Jaron Jackson Jr. And if you guys know, at 6'9", a 22-year-old power forward, Jaron Jackson Jr., or Triple J, is a elite shot blocker, and he's a good rebounder and just overall good defender, but he can also shoot the three just like Triple J. I think that's really what is making this guy get those projections to go early in the first round. Um, people saw how the Grizzlies were able to select Triple J and develop him. And they're seeing that a lot in Gilberto Mouse Mancini. Now, we have a couple more guys I'm going to go through. We're going to start out in the final three with Wallace Chandler, the 18-year-old 6'11 center out of Fordham, a smaller school, and another defensive anchor, one of the best shot blockers in the draft. Compared to uh, Troy Kane, maybe not the best, but he is still a very very good shot blocker. Needs to work on his offense. I mean, he's okay at offense, but really needs to develop that a little bit more to become a serious, serious top five prospect. But if he's able to do that, don't be surprised if Wallace Chandler jumps up into the top five as we are now down to number 13 projected, which is Lucas Vaughn out of Iowa. The 6'9 power forward, small forward is a paint protector. Um, He's smaller. Kind of reminds me just like Gilberto um, to Triple Jaron, Triple J, Jaron Jackson Jr. We don't have his comparisons yet, but he's a good defender. Um, not great in the mid range, but can hit the three ball at a, a somewhat reliable rate. He's a C three three point shooter. Um, this guy, just a good defender and a good 
uh, three-point shooter there as we now are going to wrap up our first scouting introduction with Vade Jeremic from Serbia. He is a 19-year-old, seven-foot power forward, not even a center. Uh, but this guy is a little mysterious. He doesn't do a lot all that well. Um, he can't shoot. He can't defend the perimeter. He's not really fast or athletic, but he is a good rebounder. Um, solid defending the paint, and he can score inside. And I'm at 19 years old and 7 feet tall. Vlad Jeremic has all the keys to become a one of those projects similar to Pokashevsky. Um, and we'll go ahead and do number 15, which is Edgar Doyle, finally. The 20-year-old small forward out of Virginia, 6'10". Um, not a good shooter, but man, he can drive to the paint. He's going to impress you with his athleticism and his defense. Um, and Edgar Doyle is just a good interior threat. But that's where we're going to leave off for this episode. I hope you guys did enjoy this one. Next time out, we'll be taking on Giannis, Damian Lillard, and Chris Middleton for the Milwaukee Bucks, as you can see. Isaiah Joe will still be in the lineup. I hope you guys all enjoyed this one. Hit the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications so you never miss an upload of this series. And I will catch each and every one of you next time. I hope everyone had a great day. Adios, everybody.